Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome to Insects Pests of Crops lecture series. In this lecture, lecture number six, we will be discussing on the pests of Sapota, one of the very important fruit crops of India. So we will be discussing on major pests, which includes leaf weber, or also called chikku moth, Nepopteryx ugrafella, bud and fruit borer, Anarsia acrasella, Sapota seed borer, Trimalitis margarius, one of the invasive pests, Eri caterpillar, Metanostria irritaca, and bark eating caterpillar, Indarbella species. So we'll take one by one. Leaf weber or chikku moth, Nepopteryx ugrafella, belongs to family Pyralidae. So as the name itself indicates, leaf weber, the larva in fact webs the leaves, okay, webs the leaves, make it into clumps, okay, sand scrapes the green matter, hence it's called leaf webber. In fact, the larva is pinkish in color with a lot of brown stripes on each side of the body, which is actually their damaging stage, which, you know, makes the, you know, it holds the number of leaflets using the silicon threads. And this is the adult, which is grayish moth with brown or black spots, okay, in the case of four wings, whereas hind wings are, you know, creamy colored. Okay, so as I was telling, so caterpillar webs the and feeds on the leaves. It scrapes the green matter and as a result, okay. So leaves starts drying and hanging from the webbed shoots. You can clearly see the clump of leaves which gets damaged, which you know, gets damaged because of webbing of the leaves. And apart from that, apart from the major, the damage caused by the leaf webbing, it also bores the flower buds okay, and even tender fruits. Okay, so such infested buds and flowers, in fact, they wither, they dry up and fall down. So as a result, as a whole, both because of the leaf webbing as well as the bud and fruit damage, the extent, dam extent of damage may go up to 50%, especially in the main economical fruit bearing season. And this is how very you know, clearly you can see the damage of leaf webbing by Nepopteryx eugrafella, which belongs to family Pyralidae. Okay, so the next pest is bud and fruit burr, Anarsia acrasella. So in fact, now both the Nepopteryx ugrafella and Anarsia acrasella, in fact, damage the, the buds and fruits in more or less similar fashion. You can see here, but this Anarsia species is generally restricted to North Indian condition. So the larva is dull white colored, which boasts the buds and fruits. Okay, so sometimes you can see here, the single fruit, single caterpillar can damage 36 to 46 you know, buds. That's how it become very problematic. So you can see the you know, caterpillar scraping the green matter and even it bores the you know, flower buds and as a result, the damage goes very high. And this is the adult which belongs to family Gelechidae. So very minute moth in fact. The four wings are dark ash gray colored and the end wings are yellowish which is not you know, exposed in this photograph. So how to manage this both the leaf ever and bud, bud borer is that, so we need to collect that you know, clump of infested portion and we need to burn it. So that whatever the stages are there, which, is, which are there inside can be killed. So that the further progress of the next generation can be inhibited. Or else you need to go for spray with neem seed kernel extract, biopesticide. Okay, bacillus thuringiens is commercially available formulations at the rate of one ml per liter of water or chlorophyllifos, 2 ml or lambda cellothrin, okay, at the rate of 10 ml in 10, 10 liters of water that can be sprayed so that, you know, uh, to some extent we can manage the pest. The third pest which we are discussing is Sapota seed borer, Trimalitis margarius, which belongs to family Tartricidae of Lepidoptera. So, this is one of the invasive pests which has entered India and causing serious losses. So, probably it might be, you know, come from Sri Lanka. And it is monophagous to support only, support only. So it won't attack you no know, other fruits or any other crops. So you can clearly see the first instar larvae are small, in fact, very minute, though it measures about half a centimeter or so. White in color initially, but you no, know, the grown-up caterpillar actually turns to pink color. Okay, so you can clearly see this grown-up caterpillar. Whereas adults are small with whitish four wings, having grayish spots, and wings are creamy in color with thick hairs at the margin. So not so clear in this you know, photograph. So very small, but you know, causes very serious losses by bowing the seeds. Hence it's called support seed borer. You can see the adult may lay the eggs near the flower buds and fruits. And the hatched caterpillar actually 
like say minute hole okay which is generally unnoticed and which goes through the pulp and get into gets into the seeds and bores the seeds that's why it's called seed borer okay so once the it bores the seeds again in order to pupate it comes out of the seed comes out of the pulp and makes an exit wall like this okay you can clearly see this exit wall and pupate so this pupa is in fact now uh, it actually the the, the, the fully matured larva cuts the leaves and folds it over to make a fine shell like structure so that it can escape from the the parasitism or predation within which it actually pupates so this is the pupa the shell is opened so this is the pupa and adult is actually you now it is tartaricide so hence it is also called bell moth you can see in the sitting posture it looks like bell symptoms as i was telling this is the exit wall okay we will find a small wall and this is how we can clearly see this now the excreta or the the powdery substance which is eaten is removed out of the seed which actually the larva pushes its back when it is tunneling out so we will find the board wall and the seeds so this is the exit wall so coming to management collection and destruction of the off season stray mature sapota fruits so what happens in case of sapota flowering occurs throughout the year okay very important phenological point which you need to remember so but even though flowering occurs and the fruit will be keep on bearing throughout the year yields are very high in march and between march and may and september and october only these two seasons yields are high whereas the in other time of the year very few fruits will be there in the sapota tree but those no fruits will act as a no inoculum because the insects actually multiply in these fruits and in the main season between this march and may and september october it, it will become very problematic so that's why these off season fruits which are not so economical which cannot be you no know, harvested and sold so such you no know, off season fruits should be collected and destroyed so that will kill the inoculum so as a result you no know, increase in the population in the main season can be reduced okay very important point to be remembered so this moths are actually you no know, attracted to blue light trap you can see here blue light trap attracts the adult moths which which can be erected in the field so that we can reduce the the damage to some extent if it comes to chemical control the insecticide application should be started when the fruits are lime sized fruits because during that time the small larvae which actually gets into the fruit in order to bore the pulp and then it gets into gets into the seeds so during that time itself insecticide should be you no know, sprayed and spraying should be repeated at fortnightly interval during the main cropping season and insecticides suggested are delta methrin 1 ml per liter of water profenofas 1 ml again lambda silothrin 0.5 ml indoxacarb 0.5 ml nuvaluran again 0.5 ml if it is bt formulation commercially available bt formulation at the rate of 1 ml so whatever the insecticide you you use they should be alternated you should not use the same insecticide and again again so that the resistant build up can be minimized the another insect pest which occurs on support is eri caterpillar metanostria irtaca which is belongs to family lasio campide you can see the caterpillar so larva is yellowish brown with black spots okay long lateral tuft of hairs you can see here so that's why it's called eri caterpillar whereas the adult is now has got in the four wings reddish brown as a black spot you can see with a ring ringed with a white margin okay so very characteristic coloration and you can usually the caterpillars are found in groups and especially no large number of these little caterpillar now completely defoliate the leaves so that's how it become very problematic so how do you manage this insect field sanitation so it actually also feeds on various other no vegetation which is found in the field so come now field sanitation weed free field has to be maintained so burning the groups of larvae found on tree trunk so you can usually you find they found in groups on the tree trunks so such you now groups of larvae can be killed with by burn, burning the torches so and that actually you know eliminate large number of population or resting the melatia on the tree trunk and as, as well as branches so that you now we can minimize the population another insect pest is bark eating caterpillar in darbella species belongs to family metarbellidae so usually you'll find the galleries on the tree trunk especially the place where the branches arise so they make a you know hole and from there they actually start tunneling through the branches so they make a superficial galleries and they feed the tissues so as a result the trees over time they succumb to death okay so 
the, the feeding activity debilitates the plant and uh, the vitality or the vigor of the plant gets affected. So, so very rarely we'll also find, you know, if it is uh, you know, you know, not taken care of, the tree may succumb to death. So you can see the caterpillar, which actually makes you no know, tunnel uh, in the bark region and uh, galleries are found. So how do you manage this bark eating, bark eating caterpillar? The webs around the affected portion should be cleaned. It has to be cleaned properly and it has to be you no know, treated with cotton swab, okay, soaked in petrol or kerosene, so that though in the affected portion, if any caterpillars are there, they can be killed. Or you can spray phenol pass or thiodide carb uh, in managing this pest to the gallery region, wherever that galleries are found. So th those are the major pests which uh, affects the supporter. Uh, so we'll just list the, some of the minor pests various species of fruit flies, of course, like Bactrocera carrier, Bactrocera correcta, Bactrocera diversa, Bactrocera dorsalis. So most of these are actually also in pests, mango, mango fruit flies. So very rarely, so to very less extent, they also damage support, support. Uh, citrus black fly, which is in fact a white fly, belongs to family Alirodidae, very common in citrus, also in pests support. Uh, Alirocanthus, or glue meat is called. Pomegranate fruit borer, Viro, Virachola isocrates, Deodoric isocrates, it's called. Very common on pomegranate, also in fish supporta. Eri caterpillar, Molina mendosa, very common on various crops. So these are all the minor pests which in fish supporta. Okay. So as usual, I'll end this lecture with few questions. What is the scientific name of supporta and its family name? Okay. But that white gummy latex of supporta usually you no know, so people like supporta but you no know, many people in fact because of that gummy latex which comes out of the you no know, completely mature fruits okay so if, if, if especially in the completely mature fruits the latex is not that much but in, in, in case of um, immature fruits generally this white latex, latex actually comes in and that actually you know irritating to you know feed so what is that gummy latex whether it has got any medicinal value what for it is used. So try to dig in. So thank you. Thank you very much. If there are any question, you can post below or you can email me as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.